Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Rachel Allen's poetry collection, God Complex. Um, this is a really interesting poetry collection that kind of runs on what I might call the aesthetics of decay. Um, so, so the sort of overarching focus of the collection is this sort of interplay between the speaker's breakup, the, the, the loss of some kind of relationship, um, maybe divorce, whatever it is. We don't, we don't, we don't get concrete details necessarily, but the collapse of an interpersonal relationship, a romantic relationship, it seems, um, which is linked with all of this imagery of poverty and decay and the sort of post-industrial decline of, of um, the area in which the speaker lives. So there are some poems that give us a really, really clear sense of this this linkage between the collapse of this relationship and the collapse of the sort of in environment in which the speaker exists. Um, so this one, for instance, almost none of these poems have titles associated with them, so I'm going to give you the first line of them. Um, the first house we shared was by the river. This, this poem, I think, sort of makes that connection um, between this sort of multiple levels of collapse, interpersonal collapse, personal collapse uh, on the part of the, the poet persona, and then the sort of environmental decline. So here's the poem. The final house we shared was by the river, a black winter, a black water garden. The river was deep and ran according to my moods. When things were better, we'd walk the river. In the summer, stop by a bar, sitting under a parasol, silent drinks and glasses. Once, twice, three times a year, the river would burst its bank. The river would burst its muscly bank all, o all over the closed bars and into our house, dark, destroying our rooms, like someone in unpredictable rage. The parasols and our belongings heading out to sea. I have never kept a journal, and this reminds me why. I'm too precarious in all directions. I wake up even now in the night, sweating over flooded documents. Uh, I'll find another good one. Another good one that sort of shows this, this thematic concern. Okay, here's another one. Um, how to cart off such deep pain emerging from the mouth. Living in all directions, built to practice off stage like sexual deviance. The theater of its being is vast, lonely, and without share. It is a house imposing, slanted on a hill, one rusty bucket burning on the incline, a famous painting, symbolic and manipulative. Even to talk about grief like this proves it is all performance. Ta da! For company, I look to the sheet-white sky, streaked with medicinal blues, or toward a barren tree reaching up. The iridescent smell, the iridescence of a smell like an old man's meat on thermals, a flasher's thin stink on the air, animal scent glimpsed. Unspeakable things happen everywhere, like you who are lilac with cold. So again, there's this sort of sense of decay, sense of loss, of decline, things like this, that are sort of associated with the environment of the poems. Um, and and those, those things also are connected to and reflected in the poet persona's own conception of herself. Um, and, and the thing that's really interesting about it is it's never just negative, right? It's not... 
They're poems of decay, of collapse, of loss, and things like this, but they're never just negative. They're, the language is often quite beautiful. Um, it, it is a way of using imagery, using sounds, using language, using even rhythm to sort of lift these experiences and make them make them beautiful, right? They are they are aesthetic. They are shaped beautifully, um, even out of sort of grime, this muck that that pervades the imagery. Um, so I'll, I'll read you the first poem in the collection. And we, we get a sense of this. I look out through stained glass, pressing my neck for religious lumps. In my head, time works on a flattened disc. Here is a wasteland of past aesthetics, patched up with modern tubes, a church. Perhaps I have a deity in me, lucid angel in the soft reflection. So again, that, that sort of... That sense of the blending, a wasteland of past aesthetics patched up with modern tubes, that, that sense that things have collapsed, things have fallen apart, decayed, that things are in decline, but there is that hope that perhaps I have a deity in me, lucid angel in the soft reflection, that sense that it's not just decay, it's not just decline, right? But it out of that may come beauty, right? Um, so I think that's a really important thematic component to, to the poems here, um, even in moments where there seems to be quite significant negativity, right? So, so a poem like this one. Our separation moved through my body with that rough, unfamiliar blood. I lived tethered so intensely to a present moment I lost interest in myself. I had memory loss in the extreme, which adapted became futuristic, so much so that I couldn't comprehend a time that I would want to remember, so I stopped preparing for one. I mean, even in these poems that are very negative, very um, sad, despairing, um, there is there's still an aesthetic quality to it, something that's still beautiful and thought provoking, and and challenges us to consider what it means to be human in this world of pain, this world of decaying things, and this world in which things will live again, right? Because that, that idea, I became so amnesiac that I, I couldn't imagine a time I would want to remember, it asks us to think about the future and the nature of the future. I'm going to read you just a couple more, because they are fairly short. Um, so this one actually has a title, Branches Hold Utterances. Do you ever feel like nature's bug, or that caterpillar's Gnostic face, or that you are being scolded by one? Do you ever feel like nature's bastard project, like everyone is profiting from you? Again, I think it's this interesting sort of blend of... sort of almost grotesque imagery in many cases, but again, the sort of imagery of decay, imagery of um, decline, decimation, um, these very sort of almost gross images of, of insects, right? Many people have an, an instinctive sort of revulsion toward insects, and some people don't. Some people very much like them, and that's totally fine. But I mean, many people, as we know, have a have a 
a deep root um, aversion to insects. And so I think playing on that alongside these sort of bigger questions of what it means to experience pain, to experience suffering and loss and things like this um, is really, it's an interesting approach. And I think Alan's poetry is really quite beautiful uh, throughout much of it. It, it. Again, in spite of or because of the rather negative, grotesqueness of, of much of the imagery.